Okay, so I think we are live uh, on Facebook. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining the uh, ICU Reach uh, ventilator round. And uh, today is going to be very interesting as we're going to be discussing uh, ABRV. I'm going to just share my screen. Okay, Grace, you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Thank you. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> so, is there any volunteer that uh, would like to interact with me on this one? If there is a volunteer, please raise your hand. And let's uh, get started. Uh, so again, we're going to be talking about uh, APRV. And uh, to start with, uh, I want everybody to, to know that ABRV in all the studies that were done so far is not superior to other modes of ventilation. We do have one study that showed <clears throat> we can take patients off ventilator e quicker. However, there are some limitations of that study. So we're going to understand it uh, uh, in details and I'm going to concentrate on the settings of this mode number one and then how we modify the settings for improving oxygenation improving ventilation and protecting the lung and with that I would like to start with a, with a poll so Grace if you can launch the uh, poll please and get some feedback from the audience to see how they practice uh, ABRV within yes. this uh, three uh, domains. Okay. Everyone, uh, mute yourself. Uh, Zero five. So Grace, give it uh, like one or two minutes. Depends on the dependent on the uh, number of uh, responses that you get, and let me know when uh, when you have a uh, good number of responses. If we get twenty or above, would be uh, fine. We have so far thirty eight uh, participants. you uh, do not know the answer, uh, uh, just uh, uh, a check, I'm not sure. And this is, uh, uh, a, those questions are uh, questions with multiple answers. You can check as uh, many items as you like. Maybe we should get the answers, uh, Grace. Hello. Um, unfortunately, the results haven't come through to me. So do you want to check and see if you have the results? So the first and <clears throat> the first question Everyone's uh, actually seeing the question or the poll now. I think that's working this time. Yeah. It did not probably launch on your side, so 
once I get, can you please uh, start answering the questions if you see them? The first question, oxygenation can be improved on APRV by which of the following? And you can check as many as you can. Okay, we started seeing some responses, so it's now showing. And the second question, ventilation can be improved on ABRB by, <clears throat> you can check as many uh, as you can, as you feel it's appropriate. And the third question would be, in APRV, protective lung strategy is ensured by one, two, three, or you're not sure. Okay. I will share the results with you shortly, but uh, I want to give enough time for people uh, and uh, to interact and understand the questions. And those are not easy questions, by the way, but it tells you how much you're going to be able to learn once you understand the APRV. And the purpose is to uh, learn this mode within what we can do to improve outcome for our patients. Uh, and of course, you know that those ARDS patients would require to stay within the limitations of protective lung strategy. And that's what we're going to learn, how we can uh, utilize this mode within the limitations of uh, protective lung strategy. Uh, we do have uh, uh, 22 responses already, 24. We must continue to give the responses. Uh, I just want to give a chance to everyone to uh, read the questions. And then at the end of the session, we're going to launch, relaunch these questions again and see how uh, different uh, the answers would be. Again, this is uh, questions with uh, multiple correct answers. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll now and share the results with you uh, so you can see uh, that almost uh, in the first question, oxygenation can be improved uh, on APRV pi, increasing T high, uh, 63%, increasing P high, 56%, shortening T high, 7% only, and we're going to learn much about that. And increasing P low, 15%. Uh, percent. Uh, there are four people, 4% uh, 4 of people say that they're not sure. In terms of uh, ventilation, we have 33% increasing T high, 33% increasing P high, 30% uh, decreasing T high, and uh, 30 percent decreasing sedation to allow spontaneous breathing. Uh, it looks like we're going to learn a lot today. Four percent say that they are not sure. And the last one in terms of protective lung strategy, now 19 percent are not sure, but 70 percent uh, limited P high at 30 centimeter, 15 percent uh, shortened T low to 50 percent of peak expiratory flow, and 11% increased uh, T high to decrease frequency of releases. So I'm going to stop sharing here and start the session. Okay, you see the ventilator and we're going to uh, understand how we set uh, APRV. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start from pressure control ventilation. So this is pressure control ventilation. You can see the breaths are similar to each other. Each breath is, uh, this patient is not breathing on his own, so it started by time. And the, uh, the uh, rate is 12, uh, so every uh, five seconds there is breath. Once the breath is started, the machine will give a peak pressure or inspiratory pressure of 20. You can see that the inspiratory pressure goes up to 20. And that stays for the duration of 1.5 seconds and then we have expiration okay so now when we have a patient with worsened oxygenation we go on the fio2 to 100 percent first of course and then we modify the uh, uh 
ventilator to provide higher mean airway pressure. And the way we do this, we extend the inspiratory pressure. And I'm going to walk you through moving from pressure control to APRV by first extending the inspiratory pressure. So I'm going to go up to two seconds first. And you can see how now the inspiration is longer. Okay. You can see the expiration, the patient is exhaling all the way. Well, let me go up higher on the inspiratory pressure. And let me go to 2.4, 2.5 seconds of inspiratory pressure. Now notice that when I try to go higher, I get a message that you're inversing the ratio. Let me just stop the alarm here. And what was it? High tidal volume. So let's just. OK. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now at 2.5 seconds for inspiration. Of course, the cycle is the same. So when. Uh, The uh, cycle is the same. Uh, so we have uh, five seconds for inspiration and expiration. If I go up on the inspiration, so it's going to be taken from expiration. So let me go up higher on inspiration. I go to three seconds and then up to four seconds. So of course, now I am in inverse ratio uh, mode of ventilation, meaning that I have inspiration longer than expiration. But notice what happened when I shortened expiration here, now we don't have enough time to exhale all the way. The uh, expiratory flow is cut in the middle here at around 50%. Uh, did I have a volunteer uh, to interact with me? Is there anyone who can uh, volunteer to interact with me? Uh, Dr. Ala and Dr. Sukaina. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I just wanted to move to APRV, but look at what you see right now. You see a breath, and this is again still pressure control mode of ventilation. You still have, you see a breath that started after five seconds by the machine. So the trigger is time. And what does the machine do when the breath is started? It gives a pressure. Uh, which which is 20 centimeter of inspiratory pressure. So you can see it goes up to 20 centimeter of inspiratory pressure. And it stays at 20 centimeter for the duration of four seconds. Okay? And then the, the pressure goes down, down to the PEEP level, which is five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down uh, on the PEEP to zero. And let's take a look in here. So the pressure goes up to 20, and then for four seconds, and then goes down to zero, okay? Now take a look on the expiratory uh, flow. I just want, it will correct now, we'll see where it is cut off, and see what it means, okay? We have a very high flow actually, so uh, let's just uh, do a little bit of, decrease compliance so we can see a better expiratory flow. Okay, but Sukaina, would you be able to tell me now, what do you see? Okay, now it's, it's looking better. Okay, so what can you tell me now about what you see in front of you? Uh, is this still pressure control mode of ventilation? We can say it is uh, uh, APRV, airway pressure release ventilation, because we have a uh, prolonged inspiration with a uh, beep of zero, or with, um, okay. yes, with a beep of zero. Excellent. Uh, now, you have a problem with the expiratory flow here? Yes, I have an O2 beep uh, in the expiratory flow waveform. Um, so persistent flow at the end of the expiration, um, and it is um, so it is an important in ABRV because it's prevent the lung atelectasis um, at the end of the expiration or okay. prevent lung derecrutment. 
Okay, we'll come and uh, we'll talk about that in details. But let me just first uh, go back to the simulator and Right, okay. So, in fact, what you saw was pressure control mode of ventilation. It was not ABRV, but it looked to you like ABRV. In this way, I was able to show you that, uh, you know, ABRV is just pressure control mode of ventilation. Okay. And I, this is the pressure uh, control uh, that we set it at 20 centimeter here. Okay. And then we, we gave inspiratory time of four seconds. So this is a four seconds, and then we release the pressure down to zero. And the rate is at 12. Okay, you can see now how the breath is started here. Pressure goes up to, next one. The pressure goes up to 20 centimeter of water. Giving me problem today. It doesn't want to work with me. It does not. All right. Let's do it again. So, okay. So, in APRV, okay, it is pressure control ventilation that you set the inspiratory time for the patient and the peak pressure, and then you release that pressure to zero during expiration. So let me just give you the same thing that we just did with, ABR, with uh, pressure control on ABRV, and then we can look at it in the more details. So in ABRV, I have T high. And I use four seconds, so I'm going to go up to four seconds for the T high. And we have P high, how much pressure do you want to set on the machine? And we use 20 centimeter of water. And then we maintain that for four seconds before we decreased to zero. And we utilized one second for the expiratory time or the T low. So this is exactly what we did with pressure control. And now let's take a look on it. Okay, you can see the pressure goes up from zero to 20 centimeter of water and stays on for four seconds before it goes back to zero and stays on for one second. Okay, so inspiration and expiration. The breath starts or the machine is triggered by time. And the time is the sum of T high and T low. Now again, the T high is the inspiratory time and the T low is the expiratory time. The P high is the pressure during inspiration. The, the P low is pressure during expiration. So it is certainly not any different than pressure control mode of ventilation okay this is a pressure wave and you can see the flow the flow is decelerating wave and we learned in other sessions that any pressure wave will have to be with decelerating flow wave and that's what you see here a flow that is decelerating in expiration the flow is cut at certain level that we need to decide ourselves actually so we can understand why do we do it this way okay now the only difference between pressure control mode of ventilation and abrv is that the circuit is open for the patient the patient can breathe at any time he can breathe during inspiration here and he can breathe during expiration so let's just again review the settings and let me freeze it here for you to understand it, right? Number one, we have P high, which is the highest pressure the machine will achieve during inspiration. This is set by you, and you can see we set it at 20 centimeter of water here. 
Now, how long you want to set this P high for is the T high or the inspiratory time. And that is for four seconds. And you can see that the, this pressure is set at 20 centimeters of water for four seconds. Now, once we're done with this, the pressure is released all the way down to zero. So the driving pressure seems to you to be 20 centimeter minus zero, which is 20 centimeter. And then we have expiration. And the expiration, you can see the, the, the peak flow goes to the maximum point first and then decelerates. However, we're cutting the flow here. We're not actually letting the patient exhale all the way. Why do we do that? Because you need to maintain some PEEP in the system. When you use ABRV, usually it is more for, uh, uh, for, uh, for patients with pneumonia or ARDS. You like to have some PEEP uh, for, in the system. And if, if, we, if we go down on the, on the P low to zero, meaning that we're not going to generate any PEEP by ourselves, we generate it indirectly by maintaining some flow. And that flow should be actually 50 to 75% of the peak expiratory flow. So in fact, here, what we have is kind of a prolonged expiration, and we need to shorten that a little bit so we can actually generate higher level. Of course, there is no way for you to know how much expiratory, uh, how much uh, PEEP do you have in the system. It's an estimate, and usually, we go with the flow, as I said, we cut it at 50% of the peak expiratory flow. In this way, I'm going to shorten the expiration a bit or the T low is going to be lower. So take a look on it now. I almost cut it at 50%. This way, I'm confident enough that the patient, these settings will generate an auto beep or dynamic hyperinflation that will maintain PEEP in the system. <clears throat> of course, I cannot estimate how much, but it would be approximate. Uh, actually, uh, it would be around 10 to 12 in the system, and that would be probably uh, fine for the patient. Now, again, this mode has four settings. First setting is the P-high, and the higher the P-high, the more recruitment of the lungs and the more area under the curve of the pressure. So the P high is related to oxygenation. And also the longer the T high or the inspiratory time, the more recruitment you're going to be doing in the system and it will help uh, uh, the oxygenation. So if you have a problem with the oxygenation, first you increase the P high, but you want to stay within the limitation of protective lung strategy, and the P-high should not exceed 30 centimeter of water. So you would stay within that plateau pressure of 30 centimeter of water. Most of you got it correct in the, uh, in the question that I asked, that we should not exceed 30 centimeter of water of P-high. So the second component for the oxygenation is the T-high. The longer the T-high, the more you can recruit out of the alveoli, and those alveoli that are recruited would participate in the gas exchange, and you would improve oxygenation by increasing the T-high. Now, the third thing that you would do for the oxygenation is, you know, in, in, in conventional mode of ventilation, what you do uh, if you want to improve oxygenation you increase the PEEP. So how do we increase the PEEP here? Well, if you want to do it indirectly, you can shorten the expiratory time. So by shortening the expiratory time, you can cut this earlier and then generate higher PEEP in the system. So I'm going, da going down to 0.6 seconds here. You can see how it is cut, it is cut now uh, earlier that means I have higher beep in the system. So that's a third parameter for oxygenation on APRV. And the fourth parameter would be to give the patient some PEEP yourself. You can actually go up on the uh, P-low, and the P-low here is zero, but 
you can go up on the pillow to five now you add in peep yourself this is this is going to be working like peep and this is the first question that we ask in order to improve oxygenation number one you increase the p high number two you increase the t high number three you shorten the t low to create auto beep and number four you increase the p low to create peep yourself any question about how you improve oxygenation on uh, abrv okay so if your patient is intubated and you start him on on abrv and the patient is oxygenating good however you do uh, abgs and the pco2 is elevated let's just say it was 57 and the ph is 7.20 what maneuvers on this mode you would do to improve uh, ventilation uh, ala are you still with us yes okay so tell me how you going to be looking at ventilation with this mode of uh, mechanical ventilation okay uh, either by the decrease t high or an increase t low okay wow. so you you said decrease the t high what happens if you decrease the t high if I decrease the T high, actually the worsening oxygenation and okay. they will improve the ventilation. CO2 would be uh, uh, CO2 okay. would be uh, elimin elimination. But okay. according to the situation of the patient, it is a ventilation a problem or oxygenation a problem. Okay, so so uh, very good answer actually. So I want to say that in order to improve ventilation you need to have more releases those are the releases this is a release this is the expiration and now we have here kind of uh, four seconds plus six point six that's 4.6 seconds that will give you a total of 13 releases per minute so if you want to improve ventilation you would need to decrease inspiratory time you can have more releases okay and then ventilation can get better so that's the first thing you do however if you do that if you decrease inspiratory time that means that you're going to decrease the area under the curve and you're going to impair oxygenation you're going to worsen oxygenation because you're shortening the inspiratory time so you may not want to do this if the patient is uh, having oxygenation problem, okay? But yes, you're right. More releases, meaning more uh, ventilation or better ventilation for the patient. What else you can do? For elimination of CO2. Let's stay with the T high, yeah. With, for elimination of uh, CO2, let's, let's stay with the T high. Yeah. And you, if you remember, you can also increase the T high, so we okay. can elimination uh, elimination is CO two. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Moaz. You raised your hand. You want to say something? Uh, yes. Um, I think also we can increase the B high to increase the change of the volume and pressure. Okay, so That's so I'm coming to that, but let let's stay with the T high. Will uh, increasing the T high going to improve ventilation? Uh, increasing the T high? Yes. N no, I think decreasing the T high will eliminate the CO2. Okay, so so you're you're uh, you're right uh, that if you decrease the T high, you're going to have more releases, and you're going to improve oxygenation. However, you may worsen. Uh, you're going to improve ventilation however you may worsen oxygenation but Allah is saying that increasing the T high may improve ventilation also With, is that a, is that accurate and if it I'm is not sure about this. Mr. Kaina? 
uh, yes, and somehow increase the tea high can improve the ventilation uh, because when we increase the tea high, uh, we recruit uh, more alveoli, and these alveoli will participate in gas exchange okay, and improve the ventilation. And that is correct, actually. And this is what I would do first. You know, you need you need to understand this more because now. By definition, APRV is in spare time of four seconds. That's by definition. Otherwise, it's going to be pressure control ventilation, like the one I I, I just presented you with uh, at the beginning. So so if you increase the T high, what happens is you're inflating the alveoli and you're keeping the air inside the alveoli for longer time. So if you do this. What happens oh. is the air will open up other alveoli by connecting through the channels of Lambert and the holes of oh. holes. So you know that in between the alveoli, if you can mute your screen, or Grace, you can mute them. Uh, if uh, if you keep the the air inside the alveoli for longer time, you give more chance for the air to open into or to go into other alveoli through the channels of Lambert and uh, holes of cones. Uh, and this way, you improve recruitment. And if you improve recruitment, you number one, improve oxygenation, and number two, you improve ventilation. Okay, so you need to try to see if that happens or not. You know, not necessarily because, as I said, increasing T high is going to improve ventilation, decreasing T high is going to improve uh, ventilation and that's why you had those two answers in the question that we, we we're going to see again at the end of this so but you need to see whether that is true or not you need to see whether you are able to recruit more alveoli this way or not so, okay so that's the second thing the third thing is Muaz. you mentioned the the, the p high tell me more about it to improve ventilation would you go up on the p high It's the same principle. Uh, I'm okay. That's okay, Moaz. It's the same uh, principle. If you go up on the P-high, you're going to recruit more alveoli. Recruitment meaning that you're making those alveoli able to participate in gas exchanges. And then oxygenation and ventilation both get better. Okay. So that's a third maneuver. The fourth maneuver, what about the uh, expiratory time? What can we do? Sukaina? Shorten expiratory time. Excellent. Well, if you shorten expiratory time, what happens? You're creating dynamic hyperinflation. You're creating higher P. Yeah. Would that improve ventilation? No. no. The answer is no. It does not improve ventilation. In fact, if you want to improve ventilation, you would go up on the expiratory time. Look at this. Look at the tidal volume that I'm going to be able to uh, exhale right now, from 500 to 800, by allowing more time for expiration. However, mm -hmm. would you do that? Would you do what I just did in a patient with ARDS? No. Okay, and the reason no. being, what, what happened here? I will lose the, the recruitment. Yeah. You, we did recruit it along. Now what's happening is if, you recruit the lung in inspiration and in expiration, you let it go. It 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 closes. Useless. Yes. So you did not benefit. And how long does it take to uh, close the uh, lung or de-recruit the lung? It's just it takes one time constant. Uh, I'm sorry. It takes four, three to four four times the time constant. So if you ex exhale all the way here. You already emptied everything. You lost the auto peep for the patient. So you're not going to be, yes, you're improving ventilation, but you're worsening oxygenation and you, 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 you're now collapsing the, the lungs. You don't want to do this. Most of the people who fail on APRV, they fail because of this. In, you need to maintain cutting the expiratory flow no later than 50% of the peak expiratory flow. So let me go back. 
and back to one second now still see it is more than 50 percent 50 percent would be at this point here and i need to go down so let me go down to 0.8 again and once you decide about that level you would say well there's no way i can extend expiratory time more than this this seems to be 40 percent so probably i need to go down to 0.7 <clears throat> and this is the longest expiratory time that you can allow for the patient. Okay, yeah, this is, you don't see the peak here, but seems to be uh, very appropriate. Now, when the scale is corrected, I may be able to see it uh, in a better way. Okay, so you do have limitation in expiration, what you can do. You don't want to collapse the lungs. You're not, you need to keep the, lung, the lungs recruited in expiration. Okay, what else you can do? Of course, you can get rid of that PEEP also. Okay, the, the, uh, the more driving pressure that you allow for the patient, the uh, better uh, exhalation. However, what's the driving pressure? As it, I said initially, it seems to you that the driving pressure is a 20 minus uh, five, which is 15. What is the driving pressure here? High pressure minus autobit. Excellent. The, 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 the driving pressure is the P high minus the auto beep, which you don't know. Okay, it's an estimate. But I can, I'm very comfortable here. If the P high is 20 and the P low is 5, I have 15 centimeter. And then this one here, if it gives you another, uh, 10 centimeter, I am fine with the, with the driving pressure of uh, less than 10 probably. However, if the P high is increased to 30 here, so now we have a P high of 30, and then the P low, let's just keep it at zero. You know, you want, you want to eliminate any P low. You don't want any pressure against expiration uh, in, in, in those patients. And you need to control the auto P by the flow. And you can see here, the flow is probably at 60%, which is excellent. Now here, what's the, the, the driving pressure? You have P high of 30 and P low of zero. What's the driving pressure? 30. 30. No, it is not 30. That's what you see uh, in, in the pressure. However, estimated. 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 30 minus estimated. the ultimate. This is one of the problem of the APRV that you really cannot actually uh, no. know exactly what's the driving pressure. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the beep is 14, 15, with this flow here, driving pressure is 30 minus 15, 15 centimeter, and that would be reason, reasonable. You know, any driving pressure of 18 or less is okay, but better if the driving pressure is 15 or less. So, you know, it looks like I'm on the border here, where uh, the, my driving pressure is probably going to be between 15 and 18, provided that the auto beep is, uh, is at uh, uh, 15 centimeter. Of course, you can measure the auto beep. You can put an expiratory hold and see, uh, you hold expiration at this point and see what is the pressure on the machine. Uh, this way, you can have a better number of uh, the auto beep for the patient. Okay. So again, let's just review the ways we can improve ventilation. Number one, by decreasing uh, inspiratory time, which is T high. Number two, by increasing inspiratory, high, inspiratory time, which is T high. Number three, by increasing P high, but you have limitation. You don't want to exceed 30 centimeter of water. Number four, by prolonging T low, but you also has limitation. You have limitation. You don't want to cause the recruitment. It's alarming. Okay. And then you need to increase the releases, the driving pressure, but also you don't want to increase the driving pressure more than 18 centimeter of water. Is there any other um, intervention that we can do to improve uh, ventilation? And that was included in the question. What else we can do? 
We can allow a patient to breathe in case of the mild to the moderate ARDS. Uh, allowed about a forty percent from the uh, for, uh, allowed patient to be a breathe ventilation. Excellent. So in fact, actually, we need to make the patient breathe. Okay. So you need to patients can tolerate this mode very well while they're able to breathe with the mode. So this is this is the uh, mandatory breath. This is given no matter what. Every five, uh, four point seven seconds is going to be a breath, and that breath is given by the pressure. However, it can let the patient breathe on top of that. He can breathe in inspiration, and he can have full inspiration and expiration. So you can see here how the patient. I'm going to to freeze it for you. Okay, you can see the first breath here is given, and the uh, flow goes up to the peak inspiratory flow and then decelerates. And look after that, the patient generates his own inspiratory flow. Okay, and that during inspiration. So he's breathing on top of what the pressure is given by the machine. Okay, and you can see he dropped pressure a little bit because he contracted his respiratory muscles. In inspiration, this is inspiration, you can see that he's got ex expiratory efforts here. So the circuit is open for the patient to breathe in and out. And you can see this is expiratory flow and you can see the volume decrease. So initially, this is the initial volume that is generated by the machine breath. And then the patient had inspiratory efforts here. The volume went up also slightly. And then when the patient exhaled the volume decreased now i don't see it anymore because the scale is corrected for the tidal volume okay. now you see it here okay so you can see that this is increased volume because of the patient's efforts and then in because of his expression the volume decreased this is all happening within the inspiratory time of the machine breath which is four four seconds okay. expiration normal and the patient is cut off at 60 percent which is very appropriate so this way we increase the minute ventilation for the patient by allowing the patient to breathe in and out and the patient is is now participating more in in the gas exchanges on his own with his spontaneous efforts so that's why you need those patients do not need to be sedated heavily around 40 percent in mild to moderate ARDAs 40% of the minute ventilation should be coming from the patient. Uh, and in severe RDS, probably around 20%, uh, 20 to 30% should be coming from the patient. But the patient can breathe on APRB. He should not be heavily sedated, and yes, of course, he should not be paralyzed. Uh, you know, people think that patients do not tolerate APRV. In reality, they do tolerate APRV and they can breathe over that inspiratory uh, breath. So this way we finish the interventions that can improve ventilation. Uh, uh, so Kaina, how are you able to maintain protective lung strategy with APRV? Okay, so... Um... Okay, so uh, in terms of um, the tidal, uh, the tidal volume and uh, the plateau pressure. So first, uh, for the T high, uh, uh, so maximum uh, pressure not, not to exceeding thirty. Um, okay, excellent. Centimeter so, water. So can you can you tell me what is protective lung strategy first? Uh, what are the elements? of protective lung strategy, sure. and then we apply them on so, APRB. So. Number one. Uh, low tidal volume, 4 to 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight. Okay, tidal volume uh, is four, uh, 4 to 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight. Number two. Uh, plateau pressure, okay, less okay. than uh, 30 in centimeter of patient, water. Centimeter of water, and uh, not to exceed 35 in obese patients. 
Excellent. Uh, uh, and that 35 number is arbitrary number, uh, but you need to know that obese patients have the increased uh, elastance of the chest wall. So that's why we allow going up higher than 30 centimeter. I think you're on the safe side if you say 35 centimeter of water in, in obese patients. So sometimes it may be higher than this a little bit, yes. Number three. Um, the optimal PEEP. Okay. And, and fourth, uh, the driving the pressure less than 15. Okay, excellent. So in ABRV, the plateau pressure is similar to the P high. The P high. Okay, so you don't want to exceed a P high of 30 centimeter of water in non obese patients. That's number one. Okay, so you need to maintain that. You cannot go higher than P high of 30 centimeter of water. Okay. <laughs> number two, the PEEP in uh, protective lung strategy should be appropriate per FiO2. How do you do this here? So by creating the O2 PEEP and cut it off 50 to 70% of the big expiratory Perfect. flow, we're creating O2 PEEP and by creating O2 PEEP, uh, it will lead to decrease the tidal volume and decrease the uh, and okay. decrease the driving. And what's pressure. what's the benefit of uh, maintaining PEEP in protective lung strategy? Estimate driving pressure. Say that again, doctor. What's what's the benefit of maintaining adequate, appropriate PEEP in protective lung strategy? Targeting so your tidal volume. Targeting your tidal volume. Targeting so, your tidal volume. No, it is not actually. The PEEP is is uh, uh, is to prevent collapse of the lungs. You don't want to targeting. open by, by creating. Yeah, go ahead. By creating the auto beep, you are targeting your tidal volume. In ABRV. Yes. Okay. Yes. Correct. Uh, my question was, what's the benefit of of PEEP in protective lung strategy? The benefit of PEEP is to prevent collapse of the lungs. You need to, yes. Yes. You need to open the lung, and you do, you don't want to collapse all the way. Okay. So that's the benefit of it, and this is what you're going to, this is what you're going to do with the cutting the flow at 50 to 75 percent of the peak ex, uh, expiratory flow. This way you can maintain auto beep so you don't collapse the lungs. That's number two, and number three, <clears throat> that level of beep decides about what is the tidal volume, and what's the tidal volume here? It's, you can see here the release volumes, one liter, right? 1.2 liters. What does that mean to you? Means the patient has a protective lung strategy. If I prolong a T high, so that means we have a low tidal volume from to the four to the six. Well, I want to say that it may not be very uh, possible to uh, decrease, you know, this patient is breathing on his own here and this is the, the tidal volume that he's adding actually to this with this peak pressure so if if this is your tidal volume that means you're giving patient too much air you need to go down on the peak on the p high let's just go down on the p high a little bit and see how that's going to affect the tidal volume see how it's decreased immediately okay forget about this one Okay, so now it is in the 700, but still 700 is 10 ml per kg uh, for the patient. What I want to say that those releases usually are higher than the actual uh, tidal volume that we have, we would like to, uh, to have for our protective lung strategy. Otherwise, the patient is going to be extremely uh, hypoventilating uh, uh, if he's not breathing on his own. And this would be one of the problems. If the patient is breathing on his own and he can decrease that tidal volume would be great actually, because you want to stay within six ml per kg of ideal body weight. But that's actually most of the time in ABRV is larger than six ml per kg. Now, the other thing is you see that this is happening in less frequency. Now, in, in conventional mode of ventilation, 
how often we open and close the lungs. The rate could be 18, 20, 24, 26. How many times we're doing it here? We're doing it only 12 times, 10 to 12 times. So the frequency of this is much less. That will help you to minimize the uh, pressures on the machine per minute, on the lungs per minute. So this is not happening at the same frequency as it is in conventional mode of ventilation, which may help overall in maintaining within protective lung strategy. Okay. Hello, there's just a wee question in the chat about ventilators. Um, some ventilators give the option of adding pressure support. Can it help improve ventilation? That is uh, uh, correct, but that is by level. So by level mode of ventilation is where you can add pressure support to the spontaneous efforts of the patient, whether this is in inspiration or expiration. We're not going to be talking about by levels today, but by level is available on uh, on Bennett, uh, I believe 840, and you can uh, select pressure support added to any spontaneous efforts. The principle is uh, is 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 uh, is known that you, any spontaneous uh, uh, breath can be supported. However, you cannot do this in uh, on dragger. See, those are the settings for you. You have the T high the P high, the T low, and the P low. You cannot add pressure support, but this is the way this mode is, is uh, created. Uh, uh, in principle, yes, you can add pressure support to any spontaneous breath. Any other questions, Grace? There's one more question from a while ago. You answered the maximum P high that it can go up to, but um, just what's the maximum T high? Well, the uh, maximum P high, yes, it is 30 centimeter of water. You can go higher in obese patients. Now, the T high is usually four to six seconds. By going higher than six seconds, you're not going to, uh, you're going to compromise ventilation because your release is going to be shorter. And you're going to probably improve oxygenation, but usually it is four to six seconds seconds i won't go higher than six seconds on the t high any other questions i want to cover also weaning how can we wean this uh, sukaina sukaina uh, so, so for uh for weaning um uh usually we start um to decrease the P high and to extend the T high. Perfect, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, you start going down on the P high gradually. Okay, once you get to, usually I get to 18. What does that mean if I get to 18 and then I start going up on the T high? Let's just go to six seconds first. And see how it looks. So I'm extending the T high. T high is extending and I'm decreasing the P high. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping and stretching. And that's why we call it drop and stretch. And this patient is breathing on his own. So let me go up higher on the T high. I, I said in when once you're ventilating the patient, I won't go higher than six centimeter, six seconds on T high. However, when you're weaning, this is what you need to do. You need to extend the T high gradually. So let me go down on the P high to 14 and see how it looks. So see that the patient now is on uh, P high of 14 and then the releases that are happening now at less frequency because I have now each cycle is 8.7 seconds. Okay. Of course, I can actually decrease the peep gradually too. So I can go up on the on the T low. If you go up on the T low, you're allowing 
less dynamic hyperinflation, less auto beep, meaning that you gradually decrease in the beep. That's what I would usually do first because you want to minimize the beep before you start weaning the patient. We failed to simulate that initially. That's the first thing I do. I'd like to decrease the beep for the patient and then I would go down, uh, I would extend the T high. And now let's just extend more and tell me what will happen. Let's just go to 12 seconds. Okay, so if I go to 12 seconds, what does it look to you? Anybody other than Ala and Sukaina? What am I trying to do here? Deep By deep extending deep. the T high. It is the C bump. Yes, I'm converting to C bump. Thank you very much. So see now, it's a level of pressure that it's C bump of 14. However, I'm just cutting that down every 12 seconds. Eventually, what will happen is once I go down to C bump of eight and T high of 18 seconds. This is C bump. Now you can extubate the patient. Okay. So you can see that the patient is at continued at certain level, which is eight centimeter of water, and the patient's breathing above that pressure. This is C bump. It's still cutting that every 16, how many seconds now? 18 seconds. Okay. So the release is much lower. You know, a lot of time we end up converting the patient to conventional mode of ventilation when we get to this level. But I just wanted to you how we wean patients completely on ABRV by driving the peak pressure or the P high and stretching the inspiratory pressure. Any other questions? Do you have any question in the chat? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, doctor. It was a formative lecture as usual, but I have a question. I'm so interested in the RV failure and regarding if I apply RV, as you know, a, there is a high beep, uh, high, high, uh, high beep, uh, high beep is a high. So when I increase the intrathoracic pressure, will be decreased the preload, as you know, uh, we know the RV is more sensitive to the, the uh, uh, hypovolemic. So the RV is a contraindication in the EBRV or relatively contraindication? RV uh, failure. Well, I, I won't say it's uh, contraindicated, but uh, you, need, you really need to look at the settings. Uh, uh the of the or the function of the rv for your patient and if you have uh, uh rv failure now any mode that is going to increase the intrathoracic pressure will compromise hemodynamics for you more so with aprv why because we're able to provide higher mean airway pressure with aprv compared to conventional modes of ventilation so this is a very important point a lot that you're uh, mentioning is relationship with your mode of ventilation on the function of the RV. Yes, if you have more mean airway pressure, you're going to compromise the RV functions more compared to conventional mode of ventilation. If that's a case, probably ABRV is not the best choice for your patient. It's it's you know, the, the hemodynamic profile associated with the PEEP level also or conventional mode of ventilation will dictate what is that PEEP level that you need to select for your patient. You want to give the appropriate PEEP for the patient without compromising hemodynamics. Similarly, you want to utilize appropriate settings on APRV without compromising hemodynamics. Thank you very much for the question. Allah. This is very important. When you put the mode into context of clinical use, you need to take all the factors into consideration. One of them is the RV function. Most welcome, other... doctor. So there's a few more questions in the chat. So one of them is um, usually for estimating the peak expiratory flow, um, they just eyeball it. Is there any better way of estimating the peak expiratory flow? 
uh, you can it's it's actually difficult you can freeze the screen here and look at the number here take a column uh, or a line from the uh, scale of the flow and look at the peak expiratory flow and then take another line and look where you're cutting it off now if you want to go back actually to uh, doing this go back to abrv this is probably the best way but it's it's it stays you know there's there is no line that you can add to the screen on dragger at least so i would use an external method uh, which is an estimate uh, but yes you need to take care make sure that 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 expiratory flow is cut no later than 50 percent of your peak expiratory flow Thank you. Um, there's another qu a few questions. So the next question um, is just really asking you to summarize again how to improve ventilation in this mode. Okay, so let's let's just do the poll again. That's what. Uh, uh, can we? Can you re relaunch it? Yes, we can. Okay. So let's go one by one and answer those questions together okay you you see the the, the questions right uh grace probably you do not see that those questions do you see been released on the poll. yes we can see it okay okay excellent i start getting uh, answers so okay and and let's just do that together all right so we can understand the question is how we can improve oxygenation on aprv Okay, so number one, if we increase the T high, what happens? We will improve oxygenation. We, we will recruit more. Excellent. So if we recruit more, you improve oxygenation. If you, if you increase the T high, you're increasing the mean airway pressure, which is related to oxygenation. So yes, you check the increasing T high. Now, if you increase the P high, Yes, what we, happens? We, you improve oxygenation. Excellent. So, so you should check both. I should not see. Uh, you, you don't see the results actually. I see that some people are checking T high without checking P high. You need to check both. So it's both T high and P high. Now let's go to the third one. Shortening T low. What would shortening T low do on the ventilator? It's okay now. If you shorten T low, create the auto beep. So that means you're increasing the beep for the patient. Increasing the beep will improve oxygenation. Yes. Excellent. So number one, two, and three are all accurate to improve oxygenation. And then go to what about increasing P low? Well, if you increase P low, what happens? You're, you're giving beep for the patient that improves yes. oxygenation. Yes, so the, the, the four answers are right. Oxygenation can be improved by increasing T high, increasing P high, shortening T low, and increasing P low. Let's go to the second question. Ventilation, how can we get it better? So number one, what if we increase T high, what happens? Recruit more alveoli and, and improve gas exchange. So that's a correct answer. What if we increase P high? What happens? Recruit more, participate more. Excellent. That's correct answer. What if we decrease T high? We increase that's... the number of releases. Excellent. That's that's the opposite of the first one. So it's double sword. So yes, you decrease that. You increase the number of releases. You improve ventilation. What if you decrease sedation to allow spontaneous breathing? Yes. Improve sure. ventilation. Improve ventilation. Excellent. So the four answers are right. right. Okay. Let's go to the, th the, to the third question. In ABRV, protective lung strategy is ensured by number one, limiting P high at 30 centimeters. Is that correct? It yes. is correct. 
the loss of the patient obesity when increased up to 35. Perfect. Excellent. Number two, shortening TLO to 50% of peak expiratory flow. What would that do? Will give you the PEEP. Yeah. So that is correct answer. Number three, what if you increase the T high to decrease the frequency of releases? means so more recruitment yes. and more oxygenation and less releases if you if you have less releases that means less opening and closing of the lungs and it will be improving about the share force injury excellent thank you excellent so in fact actually the questions that were uh, i'm going to just present this to you now it should have been you should have checked all the answers everything was on those questions everything was correct you improve oxygenation by increasing t high increasing p high shortening t low increasing p low you improve ventilation by increasing t high increasing p high decreasing t high decreasing sedation to allow spontaneous breathing and you stay within the limit uh, within protective lung strategy by limiting p high at 30 centimeter of water non-obese patients shortening t low to 50 percent of the peak expiratory flow or higher and increasing t high to decrease frequency of releases of course other limited uh, other protective lung uh, strategy within aprv would be to ensure that the uh, tidal volume is not uh, high in the releases uh, uh, that you have on the patient. Any other questions? Yeah, so there's a few more questions. Um, how can we maintain secretion, mobilization, and clearance Thank with you. these high pressures? Thank you. That That's a very important question, actually. That's why we put the P low at zero, because if you put any pressure in expiration, that's going to limit the ability to clear secretions. Uh, and it's one of the problem of this mode that you may have, you may build secretions and you may may have some atelectasis because of that. This is also similar to the uh, high frequency mode of ventilation. One of the problem in the high frequency mode of ventilation that we do not use anymore in, 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 in the settings of adult uh, ICU is secretions. So this is a, a legitimate problem that we may be uh, having on APRV, but setting the p low at zero will actually you don't want to have any limitation to the expiratory force so if you if you exhale faster at that time you uh, uh, allow to clear secretions easier any question any other questions thank you um one of the other questions is how can PAPE correlate with fio2 well uh, uh, how can what i'm sorry how can PAPE correlate with yeah. FIO2? Well, you're, you're not going to be able to correlate uh, uh, the PEEP. You know, if, if in a conventional mode of ventilation, what you would do is uh, you decide about PEEP level to the FIO2 level based on the FIO2 PEEP table. Well, as I said here, the auto PEEP is an estimate and you can measure it by, uh, um, by putting an expert to hold, but you're not going to do this every one hour or every one minute. You can measure it once. So it is actually, this is one of the problem is, I'm not going to relay uh, the auto beep level with how much FIO2. However, you look at the oxygenation. So uh, and when, when you move to APRV, let's say that you're 100%, you improve oxygenation, you start going down on the FIO2 gradually uh, as oxygenation is improved. If it is not improved, you keep the FIO2 at 100% and you try to maximize explanation with the parameters, with the interventions that we talked about. So those questions tell me that you started understanding APRV in a better way. Those are very good questions actually, indicates that you're, you're, you're putting thoughts into this mode of ventilation. Have you time for another question, Dr. Kerala? One more question and then, because I want to share one more thing, I think, okay. and that's it. So one more question, and it's a good question in keeping with COVID at the minute. Um, can we apply APRV on prone position? Well, it's, it gets more complicated. You can apply it on prone position, but 
if you if you go to prone position, what does that mean? Your patient is uh, heavily sedated, most likely paralyzed. You don't want to utilize ABRV in paralyzed patient. So, in other uh, words, I want to say that ABRV is not a salvage mode. It's not a mode that you go to it if the patient fails on others. I would actually start this mode very early, and you can see the best results if you start the mode very early. And I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, anecdotal results. So uh, I started the lecture by stating that there is no single study showing that ABRV has a better outcome in ARDS patients comp compared to conventional mode of ventilation. There is one study only that is a single center, has uh, its own limitations. It's showing less duration of mechanical ventilation. To answer the questions, ABRV would not be appropriate mode in prone position. Thank you very much for answering all those questions for everybody. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, your presence. We're uh, going to uh, uh, set our next uh, ventilator round for next week, but I'll tell you which day uh, it would be. It would be at the same time at uh, 9 uh, p.m. Your, uh, your time. Thank you very much, everyone. شكرا جزيلا الدكتور يعطيك العافية. يعطيك العافية دكتور شكرا جزيلا. الله يعافيك. الله أهلا وسهلا. It's nice and great session. Thank you so much. You're welcome.